Beth, we're live. It's Broadway.com live, aka we're back. For, the artist formerly known as Live at Five. How you doing, Beth? <laughs> I'm good. Happy holidays. I'm Paul Wontorek. I'm Beth Stevens. I wanted to give a lot of holiday glamour. I hope we look like a Lifetime movie. Uh, we are joined, as always, by Caitlin Moynihan, who is also serving some Christmas lights. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, hey, Beth. Yes. Very excited. We had we literally had to bring this show back because we really wanted to have this amazing new talent on. Who is our guest today? Okay, everyone just breathe because Joe Ellen Pellman is here yes. with us, the star of the prom movie. You guys... You'll be obsessed with her in like two days. Like, yes. just just trust me. Just trust me. Uh, she's Emma. She's Emma, and she's fantastic. And we're going to find out all about the movie. Uh, but Beth and I have actually seen the movie. We just wanted to talk a little bit about it. We, as as I think everyone knows, anyone who watches this show or knows Broadway.com knows that we love The Prom. In fact, we made it our be best show of 2018, 18. right? That's right. It was, it was the best show of the year, 2018 on Broadway. Yeah. Uh, I see I saw it so many times on Broadway. I've now seen the movie multiple times as well. Uh, very excited for everyone to see it. Beth, you also got to see it. Tell me a I little did. bit, uh, what, was you, what was the experience like for you watching it? Well, as you all know, I'm a super fan of the prom. My daughter, who is 10, is a super fan of the prom. Yeah. We made it a whole day experience. She reread the novelization of the musical <laughs> to prepare. I, ha I haven't different. read that. I haven't read that. I haven't read that. <laughs> there was a lot of, there were some dance parties and it does not disappoint because it's got a super starry cast. All of the songs are in it, which is very unusual. And, you know, Matt Sklar and Chad Beglin and Bob Martin's Full work is in there. Casey Nicholas' choreography is in there. So mm -hmm. it's really serving those Broadway fans that made it, you know, such a beloved piece of, of musical theater. So that's yeah, it, it's um, it's very faithful. You know, like fans yeah. of the score, I was really nervous. I interviewed uh, Ariana DeBose and she, um, I was told, I was like, I was nervous that Alyssa Green was going to get cut. You know, I was afraid that song was going to get cut. I was nervous about like little musical moments. Uh, and there are a couple minor cuts, but every song is in the movie. And if anyone has heard the soundtrack, which I'm sure you may have the soundtrack, it's fantastic. But it was, you know, we've talked about this before, but it was, you know, we saw it so recently on Broadway yeah. and the Broadway cast so fantastic and obviously they were such a big part of making the show as you are when you're creating a new musical on broadway some of them some of their personal experiences were actually written into the characters um so you know it, it was it was hard for me to be like oh my god there's a whole new group of people and then you just ultimately have to go this is a whole new version mm -hmm. um it is just as fantastic this story is out there it, it has the potential of reaching so many people uh and as ariana said they're all prom family now everyone's in the, the prom family and so i really am excited for all the broadway fans to get to see it on netflix on friday it's like friday, really soon on friday and yeah. it has such a wonderful message of inclusivity and love and all of that just reaches out. It's perfect for the holidays. It just gives you that warm, happy feeling. It's not prom season, but yeah. it is for us now. Yeah. It is for a good, good point. So um, another thing, I have a personal experience with the prom because Beth, as you know, I, I the most terrifying night of my life was spent uh, at the Longacre Theater. I was in the um, audience. You were in the audience, and I was on stage for some reason, and it was it was terrifying. Um, that I did a little cameo. In mm -hmm. what, what was the name of the character? Who, who Olivia who? Keating? Thank you, Olivia Keating is a is a mm -hmm. very important character in the prom. Uh, that night, her name was Paul Wontorek, and I got to play myself. What they did was it was sort of um, a, a fun little thing. They had some Broadway reporters do little cameos, and um, you know, a good friend of ours. Mr. Frank Delella from New York One also did it that same week. He did it a couple days after me, I believe. Um, and hey, guess what? He got to do it in the movie. And so we are really excited because he's here right now. Before we get to Joelle, we wanted to say hi to Frank. <laughs> What's, What's up, Frank? Guys? What? <laughs> Hollywood star Frank Delella. Stop How it, are you? Stop it. I'm, I'm doing great. I'm just honored to be on Live at One. Right? Is it called Live at One now, not Live at Five? 
Oh my God. Sure. Sure. I, uh, I was so excited to see you literally opened the movie. Like, and if anyone's heard the soundtrack, you're, you're on the soundtrack too. So I guess you're, wait, wait, wait pause, which Paul, I woke up to a message from you. You're like, Oh my gosh, you're on the soundtrack. And because I, I, you broke the news to me. Fan, I literally streamed <laughs> it the first second that I could. And I was like, Frank's on the soundtrack. So you're Grammy eligible, I guess. <laughs> okay. My one line. Your one line. What's your um, one line, Frank? Um, it's <laughs> now you're putting me on the spot, Beth. It's Frank Delella from New York One's on stage, and we're here at the opening night of Eleanor, the Eleanor Roosevelt musical, starring Paul Who. Paul uh, starring Dee Dee Allen. Dee Dee yeah. Allen. Dee Dee. Uh, you're and a so your scene star. partner. <laughs> your scene partner was Meryl Streep, Frank. My scene partner was Meryl Streep. So everything that Paul just said about, you know, the anxiety and the nervousness that we both felt when we heard that overture and we were the first line oh on Broadway, God. times that by a thousand because <laughs> we had like 600 extras. We had fake cabs, fake NYPD cars. Ryan Murphy is saying you're going to do X, Y, and Z. And, you know, they pumped in actually the overture while we were doing it. And oh my God, to, really? Yeah, yeah, from the Broadway oh, show, actually. They pumped in the Broadway overture. But I mean, it was it was nerve wracking, but so much fun. Wow. Now, Frank, well, we've been on many, many red carpets together doing basically that, I interviewing know. the star of a Broadway show. What, what was the set like? Where were you? So Ryan recreated Broadway, so 44th and 45th Streets, which I know you both saw think if you merge them both um, on an, a, yeah. an abandoned lot in downtown LA. And the detail, the attention to detail for this set, I remember walking on and Ryan was like, well, what do you think? I was like, uh, you nailed it. I mean, <laughs> from, from the marquees, the posters, even uh, the facade of Sardi's. And actually when he brought Meryl out to kind of, you know, bring her to me to say, Frank, this is your scene partner. She walked out of Sardi's and like, it looked as if, you know, she was leaving a party from Sardi's, Ryan, hand in hand, and it was incredible. It was so cool. Wow. And what, so what was it like? What, how many takes did you do with Meryl? I mean, you have these moments with Meryl Streep. You're, you're one of her famous scene partners now forever. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 I remember starting, we started around like 6 o'clock, and I remember getting home that night in the morning about 2 a.m. I want to say we shot that opening scene um of then from the start of you know the camera coming down and my line into them going into the theater to talk about Eleanor and sing about Eleanor probably shot that about 30 40 times mm -hmm. uh close ups of me close ups of her close ups of James wide shots i mean they like we did it a lot wow. a lot wow. yeah we the, th the three of us had stand-ins which I never, I never experienced in my life. They would say, <laughs> Meryl, James, and Frank stand-ins, please take your spots. <laughs> you guys can go back to your trailers. Everyone else, hang <laughs> It was, it was, it was, I was a movie star for a day. It was so cool. You know, you haven't just been sitting around this year waiting for your big movie moment. And you actually, it was a secret. You had to keep this a secret, right? Yeah, which like, yeah. Which is also, year. yeah, that's crazy. I don't know how you did that, but you, um, You've also been, I'm going to give you a shout out because we've been all sitting in our homes covering Broadway, but you've been on the streets of New York mm -hmm. uh, for New York One on stage and you've been making all kinds of incredible pieces. What's it been like you. for you to get out there and to interview people in the community and just really be out there making your show? Yeah, well, I, I have to say, you know, you guys are doing incredible work too. Um, this is a hard time for the community and we are together, uh, us friends, um, are a part of a bunch that, you know, really love this industry. And I know you guys will back me up on this. Like I would do anything for this industry. We're, we're all family, we're all a community. So to get out there and to tell these stories, you know, some major moments happened uh, in our world, in our society from the Black Lives Matter movement, which really start uh, kicked into high gear over the summer to, you know, the Save Our Stages movement. You know, Broadway and the theaters in New York and around the world are in need and we, we have to give them a voice. And especially here in the States, they're not getting that. And so I feel like it's my responsibility. I know you guys feel the same way. We have to give them a voice. And that's essential if, if this industry is gonna survive and it needs to survive because it is New York City and it is, it is us. It's, it's the industry, it's the community. 
Amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Are you gonna? How many times have you watched the movie now? Maybe four times. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, they took it off. They they took it off my Netflix account, so I have to wait for it to like pop back on tomorrow. So we'll be I was, a few more. Right before we went live, I was bragging about the fact that it's still in my Netflix account. For some reason, it hasn't disappeared. <laughs> Don't tell Netflix. Don't tell Netflix. <laughs> well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna Facetime you after this, and we're gonna watch the movie over Facetime. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope to Love see you, you guys. in person. Love you too. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for joining right. us. Oh, that's so exciting. I'm going to ask for his autograph when I see him in person. Yes. We knew yeah. him when, Beth. We knew him <laughs> we when. We certainly did. We certainly did. Um, okay. It is time. time. It is time. I'm so excited for everyone to uh, to meet this new star. So, Beth, thank you for joining us. And Caitlin, why don't you tell everyone about her? Gladly. Yes, you guys. Today, we have newcomer, the prom star, Joe Allen Pellman, joining us for our very first Broadway.com Live. This is super exciting to have her. She was announced to be taking on the role of Emma in the prom movie after a nationwide casting search call for her. She is incredible. This is her first like big feature movie. She was seen in an episode of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel and The Deuce, I'm pretty sure. So she knows what she's doing. She recently graduated from the University of Michigan. Um, but guys, please, everyone, put your hands together. Put your questions in the comments below. And everyone, please welcome Miss Joellen Pellman and Paul. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for that introduction, Caitlin. And hi, Paul. I'm so hi. I'm honored to be here. Broadway.com live. It's so exciting to see your real hair. Yes, this is actually um it was my real my real hair in the film as well. Our fantastic head of the hair department, Chris Clark, really like used my used my actual hair, which I love, and he did such a great job. But you've grown it out. Um, what's it been yeah. like waiting for this movie to come out? I mean, and obviously during a crazy year, originally the movie was going to come out a little earlier. Uh, what, what's what's this this last year been like for you? Yeah, so um, in March, like when um, you know the pandemic hit, I went back to uh, my my mom's house in Cincinnati, Ohio, and I've literally been there ever since. Um, and so, yeah, I'm currently in my living room right now because um, I was living in New York City um, before the prom, and, uh, okay. but now I'm back in Ohio, and it's been good. I've just been spending a lot of time with family, um, doing some reading, getting really into cooking, sort of what a lot of people have been doing so tell me about your own history with the prom because from what i hear you're also a fan of of the broadway show you saw it at the long acre theater right so talk about sort of how you uh first seeing the show and i think you took someone special with you and tell me a little bit about your first experience uh seeing it as an audience member Yes. So I actually, I remember the first time I ever even heard about the prom was in um, a musical theater history class at the University of Michigan. And we talk a lot about, you know, how uh, shows go from out of town tryouts at um, regional theaters to Broadway. And we were talking about this new show playing at the Alliance Theater in Georgia called The Prom. And I was, I was just like, okay, this sounds like a really fun show. I want to see this someday. Um, and then fast forward to the spring of 2019 um, when the prom was on Broadway and my mom and I went to go see it because it just, I mean, it had so many, we had heard such wonderful things about the show and it had so many themes that really like hit home for us. Like, cause I'm queer and my mom is gay. Like we're from Cincinnati, Ohio and we love musicals. So it's like all like all of our, like, we're like this is like the perfect musical. Um, and we just laughed and cried our way through it. Um, and I just remember like, leaving the theater feeling like okay like this is why i wanted to become an actor because sometimes you know you strike gold and you get so lucky that you can work on a project that's like so artistically sound and brilliant and it also has this wonderful message and i was like okay i'm so glad that shows like the problem exist um and then so that was like long before like i didn't even know about the film adaptation mm -hmm. by that point definitely didn't know about any audition like i had just heard such great things about it and then um it was july of 2019 that i got the audition um and i was like so excited i like screenshot the email to my mom and i was like oh my gosh can you believe it's our show um 
And, you know, I just like did everything you do for a dream audition. Like I practiced it a million different ways and I like broke down all the beats. Um, and then I just, you know, I, I went in there and did the best that I could. And I knew that like, it was out of my hands at that point and I just had to keep moving forward. And that's really where our like phenomenal casting director, Alexa Fogel, she really saw the potential in me and she championed me. She was the one who showed my tape to Ryan. And so I really have like, I have Alexa Fogel to thank for, you know, why I am here today. Um, and then it was about like a month before I heard anything. Oh, and I should mention um, for the audition, they had us do two scenes from the prom. Um, and then they asked uh, uh, us to bring in a uh, 32 bar cut of an acapella, like acapella song, like anything. And so I sang Changing My Major from Fun Home. So I was like, oh, I love perfect. that show so much. Cajon, like, Cajon, like Cajon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, oh my gosh, did I say Changing My Major to Fun Home? Oh my gosh, Changing My no, Major. No, you said, no, no, from, from Fun Home. home. You're, you're yeah. right, you're right. I was just giving that little inside. I want to make sure everybody knows. Yes, changing my major to Joan because it just felt uh -huh. like like I don't know very much in the same world as the prom musical. Yeah. Um. And yeah, a month went by before I heard anything, and then I got a call while I was actually like at my I was working my retail job at the time, and I was like in the back stock room, and I got the call that um my tape was going to be sent to Ryan, and there might be a callback, and I was like, oh my gosh. And then I got the call that there would be a callback. And then the night before I found out I was the only person they were reading for the role of Emma. And at that point, I still, I didn't know who was going to be reading um, Alyssa Green. And so I walk into the waiting room of the audition the next day and I see Ariana DeBose's name <laughs> on the sign-in mm -hmm. sheet. And it's like, I mean, like, I don't like, mm -hmm. I mean, like, I can't even understate how like, overstate how floored I was like she is Broadway royalty and here we were like in the same waiting room like making small talk like ahead of this chemistry read um and she was just so supportive um through the whole through the whole audition and it went you know it went really well I remember at the end um Ryan gave us both a hug which is like a hug from Ryan Murphy is like <laughs> won the lottery um but I also knew that you know I did the best that I could and I just had to to just keep going with my life. Um, and then the next day I got the call while I was at a thrift store in Bushwick, Brooklyn. And here I am. <laughs> you know, Ryan said in the in the press notes that that seeing you and Ariana together was really sort of like sealed the deal, that you guys were just and you know, I interviewed her uh recently. She's obsessed with you. She's like I'm obsessed, obsessed like she, with her. Oh my God, she could just talk about you forever. She's obsessed with you. Like she had the best time. Um, and she talked about how comfortable you were and how like, you know, you just kind of walked on that set and you had these scenes with these major stars and you just seemed so like <laughs> chill with it. What do you think give you, what, what gives you that center and that sort of, I mean, that, that takes a lot. Were you actually nervous? And terrified under it oh, all for sure it's like i'm so glad that like that's how i sort of came across because internally i was like you know like anyone would be i was like oh my gosh how is this real like what is my life right now but um yeah i just like i mean i think it's it's again it's thanks to like this really like welcoming and inclusive environment that ryan murphy yeah. created on set where like people you know like Meryl and Nicole and James and Andrew and Keegan and Carrie, they were all just so welcoming to me as a newcomer. Cause like, I mean, they all, I'm sure they remember their first film, their first yeah. project. And they wanted to make sure I had just a great experience. Um, and I mean, and they're humans, they're humans and they're funny and they, uh, you know, they're, they're just like us. And so being able to just like, learn from them every day like every day was a master class I just felt like I was a sponge like observing like okay like not only just like you know how they how they you know perform and how they do their job but how they just interact on set how they just are humans on set and they bring you know their their um humanity to everything they do it was I mean it was the greatest experience ever <laughs> I also got to talk to uh, Mr. Andrew Rannells, who ah. plays Trent, who plays Trent, and he wanted me to ask you. He said that um, 
you thought he and James Corden were having like a secret relationship on set. Tell me about that. I literally like we still were um, we're in a group chat, and I feel like the luckiest person in the world to be in that group chat because I do feel like they were like my like older brothers on set. Like so often, um, like they would just be they would be laughing and like making jokes, and they would like include me on it, and I would just be like, oh my gosh, like like my brothers they're they're they want to hang out with me i feel so cool um no i literally love them so much and i'm i was such a fangirl for andrew i remember like the first time i saw his tony performance of i believe like i was obsessed i was in high school and i was like this is acting like he like this is the epitome of just like owning a stage for five minutes and then like seeing him in person and being like, oh my gosh, you are just the funniest human. I still like, I mean, I've never laughed so hard as I did with Andrew and James on set. Is it safe to say that you want to do Broadway? Oh my goodness. I I want Broadway to come roaring back. I want everyone who was employed before the shutdown, I want them to get their jobs back and I want to be cheering them on. And then if down the road there is a, a place for me on Broadway, I would, I would love to. That's been my dream. But I want everyone else to get their jobs back and for Broadway to come roaring back first. You know, I couldn't stop thinking the whole time I was watching a movie. I said, okay, Drew Barrymore needs to play her mother in a movie. Like, uh, Drew Barrymore, she she needs to make a project and you could be her daughter in it. Did you ever get that before? Oh my gosh. I would absolutely die for that. I do. I I get um, Drew Barrymore and Elizabeth Moss often. And I am so honored. I look up to both of them. Like, I think it's the best comparison. Oh my God. Wait, I'd also be down for a Mad Men like prequel show, like where Peggy, young Peggy, I'd be done for that too. Oh my so goodness. <laughs> that is a, I, I like your thinking, Paul. My mom is in the other room. She's giving you a thumbs up. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I love that. I love that you guys got to experience that together. It's so, it's so incredible. Um, I, we have a lot of people watching and a lot of questions for you. So I want to bring Caitlin oh, back in. Okay. And we're we're going to take some questions from people. Oh my gosh. Okay. I really like this one. Uh, Kai Jacobs on YouTube says, how did it feel putting on that iconic aqua blue suit for the first time? Oh my gosh. Like that, it just felt, I felt. There it is. There it is. Oh my gosh. And I mean, all thanks, all thanks go to, that is all Lou Eirich, our phenomenal cast, our (laughs) costume. costume designer sorry um and she when she first showed me the mock-ups of that of like this like vintage inspired tux that was just this beautiful shade of blue I was like this is everything I want to wear this everywhere I wish I could have worn it to my prom I want to wear it every day and it just felt like this is this is you know this is the truest form of the character of Emma and I, I loved getting to work with Lou on that do you have any favorite moments in the finished film? Like when you finally got to see it, did anything, any scenes that you were just really excited to watch? Oh yeah, I, for me, the number that still always gets me is Unruly Heart, just cause it's like the, the time in the film where we just get to zoom out and we get to realize, wait, Emma's not the only person going through this. Like there are other people out there who can understand and who, who are helped by her sharing her story and, like literally I, it still just gets me. And also just like, um, I just think the song is beautiful. Matt, Chad and Bob did such a wonderful job with writing all of these songs and especially Unruly Heart for me is. Wait, is really uh, aren't you and Ariana starting some sort of Unruly Heart? Yeah, song? we're starting uh, um, the Unruly Hearts Initiative. And it's a, a like sort of a way um, for anyone who feels call to action after watching the prom. It's a way to connect them with these wonderful organizations that are out there that are, um, you know, ready to help them or ready to like help them help others. And so I can't wait to share more about that in the future. We're really excited for it. Fantastic. What else, Caitlin? I love it. So Bella on YouTube wants to know if you had any like input into the things that were in Emma's room, especially the Janelle Monae picture that was in (laughs) (laughs) Emma's decor was like for her room. Oh my gosh. No, I, I did have a hand. I loved, love, love the Janelle Monae um, poster. I think that was like, I was like, okay, hit the nail on the head. Um, But we did provide 
uh, the my baby photos that are sort of like scattered, like, you know, on the mantle and on her walls. Like it's sort of like, a, it was, it's been a fun Easter egg hunt with my family for them to see like, oh, that's, that's baby Jojo uh, on the wall. So that is my one contribution. <laughs> I love that so. You also, much. you also, we also get to meet Grandma. I know Grandma B, the phenomenal Mary Kay plays. I, yeah. uh, I love working with her. She is a legend, and I'm so glad. I know we get a Grandma B. How exciting is that? <laughs> that, that kind of goes into uh, Gina on Facebook wants to know as someone who got to see the sh the show on Broadway and play Emma in the movie. What was it like to you to be able to dive so much deeper into the story of like Emma's past that we don't really get on the stage? Oh, I mean, again, I think that's like, like all, all thanks goes to Ryan Murphy for really like exploring all of these, like and bringing these characters to like a 3D level, like so that you can, you get, you know, Barry's mom, Vera, you get uh, Grandma B. And I'm just, I just, it was so wonderful to be able to like, yeah, dive even deeper into this wonderful character. Love it. Okay, I think we have time for a few more questions. I think Kit on Facebook wanted to know what was the very first scene that you filmed? Like what was the very first thing you did? Yeah, so believe it or not, we started with the big one. We started with um, the number Alyssa Green and the scene right before and after. So like the breakup wow. scene. Wow, I, I know. Start with the drama. I, <laughs> no, but I am so glad that I got to ex like start my experience with Ariana. Because like from the moment, like from the beginning, like we had each other's backs. And, you know, we were in this experience together. And it was just, I mean, that first day, I mean, that's the best job in the world. Just like listening to Ariana DeBose sing of all day and just like getting to like, a, like play on stage or on set with her. Like that is, it was the best day. How, speaking of hearing amazing singers sing, what is it like listening to yourself on that soundtrack? It's so good. <laughs> Oh my gosh, again, like all, all thanks go to our phenomenal music uh, producing team, Adam Anders, Amanda Creed Thomas, Alex Anders. Um, and also I got to shout out my, the vocal coaches that I worked with, um, Anna Vids Watson, who is my teacher at Michigan and Liz Kaplan in New York and Amy Chapman in LA. Like I, you know, all of my, like, uh, singing experience growing up and in school it was all you know for live on stage and like singing in choirs and I really had no experience like in a recording studio right. and so I felt you know I just had this wonderful team of people surrounding me who just wanted me to do my best and really help me adapt to like the you know differences of singing in a recording studio versus singing live on stage. Wow I love awesome. it. Okay, I think we can do one more question. And Nova on YouTube wants to know, can you talk about the dancing? How difficult was the dancing on a scale, specifically from a scale from one to 10? But I think mostly <laughs> for Naz, what was that like? Put us there. Oh my gosh, I would, like the dancing was intense. And I, I again, all things go to our phenomenal dance team. Casey Nicola, Beth Nicely, Brendan Stimson, Jack Sipple, Patrick, and John, like they made us look like a million bucks. And we rehearsed so much. And like, I mean, I feel like I truly learned like what work ethic is from rehearsing Zaz with Nicole Kidman because we um, we did not stop until we got it exactly how we wanted it until, and Nicole was so specific and she was just like such a joy to learn from. Um, but yeah, it was, it was definitely hard. Like there were, especially like learning the, um, finale at the end, like I would like record the dances in rehearsal and then I would go home and practice them like at a slower speed. Cause I'm like, also like I'm dancing next to Ariana DeBose, like the best dancer of our generation. Like I, I've got to, I got to pull my weight. Um, and so, yeah, it was definitely a challenge, but, um, it's, we looked amazing because we had this great group of, you know, dance, dance and choreography champions. Well, two more days and, and the whole world is going to be watching the prom. And I'm just so happy that this story is living on in such a beautiful way. And I'm so excited for you and so nice to meet you. And I can't wait to meet you in person someday uh, and see what's next. I'm so excited for you. How excited are you for Friday morning? Are you just gonna wake up and like look at it on the queue? And 
<laughs> I I'm so excited. Definitely nervous, but also very excited. <laughs> Awesome. But thank you so much for having me, Paul and Caitlin. Of course. This was so much fun. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, hey, Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Yes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in for our very first ever Broadway.com live with Miss Joellen Pellman. You guys, guess what? We're going to be back here again on Friday, December 11th at 1 p.m. with the one and only Leslie Margarita talking all about Who's holiday. So be sure to tune in then and have a great rest of your Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs>